Hi everyone and welcome to Natasha's Lips, Tips and Great Flips. I'm Natasha Jameson, a hair and makeup expert helping you navigate through incredible beauty trends featured in the industry. This is my passion and I hope that I inspire you to live your own. We have a fantastic show for you today as we welcome founder of Rent to Own Wealth and sales representative at Rockstar Real Estate, Sonia Sky as well as welcoming speech and life coach Marilyn Latchford to the show as we find out about non-verbal communication with first impressions. But first, we kick things off by talking trends with my friend, the beautiful Julie Henderson. Welcome back, Julie. Thank you, Natasha. I'm so happy that you're back. Thank you. Because we are talking trends, black eyeliner. Okay. Okay, huge, huge, huge for 2018. All right. It's being seen everywhere. There's always variations because the graphic eye has been really, really popular last year and is going into this year. But this year, the edges are met because the last year's whole trend was the negative space where you basically see skin and then lines of horizontal nature and graphic little designs. So that is what's upcoming. It's called the Cleopatra Eye. Pretty. Thick on the top. Yeah. Thick on the bottom, so this is not for the light at heart. <laughs> this is like my kind of trend. Woo, woo, woo. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. It's absolutely beautiful. It can be tweaked. Yes. Like, I don't think that you would want to wear a very stark, thick line. No. You'd probably do maybe like a dark brown or a gray or a plum would be great. Yes. But basically the whole concept is, and it's everywhere on social media and the celebrities are sporting it, that it's very pointy at the inner and outer corners. Okay. You know, thick line and they meet at the, the top and the bottom lines meet at each corner. Now, for somebody like me, you know, we've talked about this before, that has close set eyes. All my girls that have that, you have to be really, really careful. You don't want to draw too much attention in towards, you know, the lack of space that you have between your eyes. So I would extend it more farther out. And the way that you can tell, you know, I've told you about this, mm -hmm. is if you have close set eyes, can your eye fit in the middle? Yours can, mine can't. Yeah. So that's how yeah. you can tell. And if you have, you know, wide set eyes, go for it. Right on. Now, so, do you get that effect for the nice Cleopatra look with a liner? Or would you use a liquid? Would you use gel? What would you use? I think it's open to whatever you want to. Some people okay. feel more comfortable with powders. Like, you know, you wet your angled brush. Mm -hmm. uh, some people, like me, I like the gel liners, you know, that the really, like, clean lines. Yes. So it's really kind of based on what your preference is. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, you know, there's a take on it. It's, it's smudgy. It's smoky. It's slightly rounded for those people that can't handle the point. So I would say trace around that slightly, slightly winged, slightly rounded end and yep. fill it in with some powder or gel liner. Okay. That's what I would say. It's a really hot trend and it's always in some form of variation going to be, you know, showcased on any show, red carpet, etc. Nice. But a lot of the models are absolutely sporting it. Okay. On to the next trend. All right. Headpieces and flower crowns. This is more, of course. The beautiful wedding season is coming up, and I'm going to see a lot of this. Yes. 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 The gorgeous flowers, you know, the crowns. Yeah. Or just scatter, you know, bunches of faux flowers, real flowers, and um, antique pieces of gold and pearl. Okay. Super, super trendy. Sounds a little bohemian. It is. Yeah. It actually is because yeah. even with like the whole glitter movement, they're yeah. actually putting Swarovski crystals on the part oh. and making it a part of like the whole finished look. Okay. Because you can have a very understated hairstyle yeah but the second you add some beautiful arrangement of flowers and some softness it changes the tone it's more, more romantic mm -hmm. so it's worn in a different way than it was last year yep. it's cascaded around the head yes or focused on one side yeah and you know even cloth flowers it's just they're really really beautiful they're vivid colors people are having lots of fun with them okay. and you'll that will be the focal point okay if you want to have an understated wedding or even if you don't that creates the focal point. Right. You gotcha. know what I mean? Gotcha. And then these chains and trinkets and pearls, which look so elegant and graceful mm -hmm. in everybody's hair and texture and color as well, yeah. uh, you're going to see a lot of that. But it's not the dainty pearl, it's the bigger pieces of pearl. Like everything is much more amped up. Nice. And any age can wear this, Natasha? You know you what? Think? Any age. Yeah? Have you ever had flowers in your hair or some a beautiful piece? Yes. Yeah. You really feel like you're kind of, it's another layer to your beauty, another feminine, like factor to femininity. Okay. So I really love that. And I love the fact that, you know, it's available to us. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes things are hit and miss, but no more. I mean, even colors, 
you know, you can wear whatever color as long as it's farther away from your face. Yes. You know what I mean? I gotcha. Yeah. But the brides, like, they will definitely bring in the factor of, like, the makeup. Yes. You know, with the hair. Okay. And some sort of an accessory or head pieces. But we're looking, like I said, at beautiful flesh flowers with, flowers with more greenery. Yeah. And they're strategically placed. They're whimsical, they're fantasy, they're, they're, you know, a really big hit. It's not going to be for a very small, minimal event. These are going to be for those moments in life that you want to kind of step it up and feel a little bit more, you know, glamorous. Right. For so, sure. For sure. Absolutely. Pretty. So that's something to, to look forward to. Oh, nice. So if you're ever going to a wedding, you're going to come to me, I'm going to do your hair and <laughs> It won't and, be mine. I'm not doing that again. Oh, <laughs> come on. Don't never say never. Oh, never. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Julie, for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Love having you as my sidekick. Thank you. Up next, I create a metallic eye. Stay with us. Welcome back. We are going to create a beautiful metallic eye on the gorgeous Caitlin. We've finished the one side of her eye so that you can see the look. It's a very hot trend this year. And we're going to recreate the look on the other side. We've already pre-lined her eye, framing it, and we've just added a little bit of mascara because I didn't want to interfere with her beautiful classic beauty. So we're going to always create a base. Okay, we're going to prime the lid. So I'm just going to add a concealer to the entire movable part of the lid. And the reason why I choose concealer it's less expensive and more hydrating. So once you have that, the next thing you want to do is spray all of your brushes that you're going to be using with a little bit of water. Why? Because it really intensifies the pigment. So I'm going to go in with a beautiful um, dusty rose that's very, very sparkly and reflective. This look is really, really trendy. And the more reflection, it's not glitter or sparkle, it's more reflection, the better. And I'm going to show you how to layer the different levels of sheen based on uh, what you're trying to create, which is that really, you know, very kind of unified metallic eye. So once you've covered the whole entire lid, the trend is whatever you do to the top, you must do to the bottom. So you're going to look straight up and we're going to carry it right through to the bottom. The bottom lash line is a really, really hot trend for this year to make sure that you replicate the colors and the pigments throughout. So the next color, we're just going to layer on top of that one. Each time we're layering it less and less and closer and closer to the eye. So I'm not going to go as high as the other one. I'm going to go slightly underneath. Now these tones are just slightly different. I'm just going to spray my, my brush again. They're just slightly different, but it's going to create depth with her beautiful eyes. And she does have gorgeous eyes. She's a gorgeous girl. And we're just going to really focus that right across, right slightly underneath where we just amplified the color. Going right into the next color, which is a deeper plum now. Now we're bringing it right into the outer corner of the eye. I sprayed my brush. Very important to do that. As you can see, right away you're getting that really reflective tone with a lot of pigmentation. Okay, we want to focus that and concentrate it. You can soften it with your fingers and everything you do to the top, we're bringing right to the bottom. So we're just going to make sure that it's completely consistent, top to bottom, right, right through. You can close your eye and just blend out the edges. Excellent. We're just going to follow this along the lash line as well. Okay, blending that out again. And now I'm going to go in with this beautiful liquid. It's again a metallic color in liquid. It's just going to hit another level of reflection and drama to her eye. Okay. I'm going to leave that for a second. And I'm just going to blend it with my fingers. You can definitely use your fingers. I use my fingers a lot for these kinds of, you know, tutorials. Because you can really focus the pigment right exactly where you're looking for. It's not going to bleed somewhere else. It's going to be focused exactly where it needs to. We're going to go right on the bottom with the same liquid, plummy, metallic. And I'm just going to blend that out, wipe it off, close your eye for a second. We're just going to go right into that right there. Okay. And as a last 
we always want a little bit of reflection right at the center of the eye. This is the movable part of the eyelid. Most people can actually, you know, utilize this look. The glitter pieces and the sequins and the crystals, that's kind of a, you know, it's a personal choice, but this is definitely something that can totally be used by any and every woman. You can focus that pigment right on this movable part of the lid. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of reflection right at the center. I'm just going to make sure that it's really wet because that's exactly what's going to grab that pigment and really, really focus it. Just like that. And of course, we cannot forget about the inner corners of the eye. A little tiny bit of sparkle right in here. And you're going to look straight up and always on the bottom. Excellent. That is, that is the finished result. I always get her to look straight at me so that I can see if she needs a little bit more blending. But she seems to be beautiful. It's a really hot trend. Everybody can wear it. It's suitable for every single skin tone. And I hope that this was, you know, something that you enjoyed. Coming up next, we speak with Sonia Skye. Stay with us. Welcome back. Joining us now is founder and president of Rent to Own Wealth and author of Stop Renting, Start Saving and Stop Waiting, Start Investing. And she is also a sales representative at Rockstar Real Estate, Sonia Skye. Sonia, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Natasha. Absolutely, my pleasure. Your story is so incredibly empowering and inspiring. So that is the first space where I want to talk to you about. I would like to start our conversation by having you share with us your personal journey starting out in the real estate world. Well, my journey in the real estate world was something that really wasn't planned at all. It came about from more of a, a need in the fact that I was raising three kids on my own, barely getting by, my house, I couldn't get a mortgage on it. I was about to lose my home and I was looking for options. I was looking for different alternatives on how I can get out there and raise my kids and have the money to support them. And that's when I started looking for different ways of how I can make some money and be there for my kids and still have the time with them. Absolutely, and I think a lot of parents think like that, you know, especially, you know, people that are single or divorced, that are single parent families. I know you have a special passion for helping women increase their independent wealth. How can a woman achieve this? And why is this cause so close to your heart? This is so close to my heart, Natasha, because I was in a situation where I was not knowing what to do, and I see so many women yes. that uh, we take care of our kids, we spend so much time doing that that we don't actually take time for ourselves and prepare ourselves for the worst situations. Like That's true. It could be a, a divorce in my case, but it could also be a loss of a job, it could be illness. It's really important that you have something else on the side that you can have some passive income and prepare yourself and just know what you're doing from a financial perspective so that you don't get stuck and have to struggle through it. You make a valid point and you're going to affect a lot of viewers just by helping them in this way. Being a founder and president of Rent to Own Wealth, what advice would you give someone who wants to invest in real estate? Anyone wanting to invest in real estate, I would say find a mentor, find someone who's already doing it because the best way to learn is to learn through someone who's already been there that can teach you. And starting investing in real estate is something that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go and buy all in or all out. All in yeah, or exactly. all out. You yeah. can start small. The way I started was I was renting a room in one of, in my house, one of my daughter's rooms because that's what I needed to do just to get by at that Absolutely. time. So you can start really small. Absolutely. Wow, that that is a great and valid point. I don't think people realize that they have such options. A garage, a basement, a room, anything can really, you know, supplement your income and create income for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's so many different ways to get started, even with joint venture partnerships, where if you have the knowledge and you learn the skills, other people can give you the money to get started. Absolutely. For some people, though, owning a home in today's market can be unrealistic. 
What are some other options that are available for people to consider? Well, there are other options. For example, when I went to the bank because they wouldn't give me a mortgage, one thing that I found out is that someone could actually buy my house and rent it back to me. And that's when I started learning about the whole rent to own. Say that again, because that's very important. Yeah. The, someone can buy your house. Yeah, and, and rent it to you so that you don't have to leave your property. You can wow. start paying rent on it. Absolutely. So one thing I've been helping a lot of people with is getting into a rent to own. A lot of people don't realize that yeah. you can actually go buy a house, have someone else buy it for you, and you're just paying a, a rent on it where a portion of your payments are going towards the purchase of the ho house so that one day you can actually own it. Absolutely. But how would people know if they didn't have a mentor or someone to guide them, of course? There's always safety in that, right? Somebody that's actually gone through it. For sure. From your expert standpoint, what can you do to, what can we do to further our business and life goals? Well, again, having a mentor is really important, someone who's already done what you've mm -hmm. done. Educating yourself. Go online. There's so many resources out there. Educate yourself and have other, have a backup plan. You, many people have one job and you have that job and you think life that's is it. great and that's right. it. But something happens in your life and then all of a sudden you're stuck. But if you were just renting a room, let's say, in your house or renting your basement or a storage unit somewhere and you've been gaining a little bit of passive income, you have something to move towards instead of feeling stuck and possibly losing everything that you've worked so hard for. Absolutely. Investing in anything has its set of risks. What advice would you give to those that are hesitant in, invest in investing? There's always a risk with everything that you do. So that's why I always say start small. Sometimes when people start investing, they're thinking about buying these big multi-units yes. and that's what's in their minds. And it, it really doesn't have to be that way. Like right. those examples that we talked about, you can start small and yes. you can educate yourself and get yourself to a point where you feel comfortable and you're ready to go and, and have that passive income. And at the same time, help others. Yes, I think you're doing that today. Thank you, Sonia, so much for being a part of the show. Thank you so much, Natasha. Absolutely. And up next, we talk to Marilyn Latchford. Stay with us. Welcome back. Joining us now is speech and life coach Marilyn Latchford, and we are discussing how our individuality and demeanor can help us stand out in a crowd and create a positive first impression. Welcome to the show, Marilyn. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, my absolute pleasure. So it's true what they say, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. No. So it's really important to understand the factors that influence that. Mm -hmm. So how quickly can a first impression be made? First impressions can actually be made from anywhere from seven seconds, seconds. to 30 seconds. Wow. Could you imagine? That's a very short fast, period fast, of time. And, and the point to this is that a first impression, whether it's good or bad, is lasting. Absolutely. So you only have one chance to make it positive. Seven to 30 seconds. Seven to 30 seconds. <laughs> That's really, really fast. So even before you speak, they already have an opinion and impression of you. Oh, absolutely. Coming into a room. Yes. Being in an audience. Absolutely. Being in a classroom. That's true. You're always making a first impression. Yes. Can you explain what factors influence nonverbal communication? As I understand that people trust more nonverbal than verbal. Well, yes, people do because 93% of your communication is actually nonverbal. That's a lot. It's a lot. And where do people actually put their their attention is on their words. But if you think of it, it is your body language, your gestures, your posture, it's your voice, eye contact. Yes, absolutely. All those factors are very, very important because I've been in a situation mm -hmm. where some of those things are kind of lacking or not there. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I have thought that, oh, I don't know about that person. I'm not really sure they're as confident or, you know, what are they doing on stage? Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about some subtle changes that can make a world of difference as to how people hear, see and feel us. Mm -hmm. Well, the, th the first thing that I suggest people to do is think about communication as a 3D adventure. So you want to have height, you want to have width, but you also want to have depth. So the height is really your posture. You have to be aware that you're 
you're not closing into yourself, yes. you're actually coming out and presenting yourself to the world. It means that your head is not over to the side, it, it's, it's very gently balanced. balanced. Mm -hmm. yeah. The width is, is how much space you take up, up around you. If you are inside and very conscious and right. putting up a barrier, you're not going to... Closed posture. Closed posture. You're going to look like you aren't really confident and, and have the energy for somebody's project. You open up with your hands out, out yes. palms up, and people love you. I have no problem with that, apparently. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I'm very verbal with my hands. Um. The, the third thing yes, is depth, and depth. the depth is really your facial expressions. It's your voice. People want to hear a really nice, rich voice. And it's also your sincerity. Your sincerity is your eye contact and, right. and gathering them all in to you. Absolutely. And how impacted are we by nonverbal cues then? We're, say? we're very, because people subconsciously make decisions based on what they see. Yes. So if they see somebody that is hesitant, then they'll respond to a hesitant person. So it's very important that you project out to the world a positive, who you are. Yes. And whatever you project out, that's what the world is responding Isn't to. Isn't that you. interesting? Because mm -hmm. you would think that you could overcome that. And if I want to project positivity or humor, mm -hmm. people are reading it in a very different way. They are. Because in many cases, people's body language and their movement don't really reflect their words. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Power of our voice. Mm -hmm. Why is a rich, full voice important and how can we kind of maximize our voice? The voice is really something that people don't really take care of and they underestimate the value of the, of the voice. And the quality of your voice is just simply air. If you breathe deeply enough, you have enough air to go through your vocal cords and have them vibrate so right. that you are really embracing people. People can hear you. People can hear the sincerity of your voice. Right. So that power, that projection, and the, the fluctuation mm -hmm. of your voice. Mm -hmm. You once told me it's like a song. It oh, has it to is. be like a, like a dance. Yes. It's like a song. You want to have rhythm. You want to have magic in it, actually. And if you think of of words as musical note, your voice will automatically go up and down. Oh, that's great for public speaking because mm -hmm. nobody wants a monotone. No, <laughs> no. That's very boring. Yeah. Well, even if you're dynamic, a dynamic speaker, if you're dynamic all the time, that's right. then you're just as monotone as somebody who's very quiet. Absolutely. Such a pleasure and an honor to have you on my show. Ah, my thank pleasure. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much to Key Roche, who is my sponsor for all their continued support. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.